today's tutorial we are going to be making teleporters inside of roblox studio to get right into that let's go ahead and start off by creating two separate parts this first part i'm just going to insert a brand new part by clicking on this part button right up here and right from there we can go ahead and scale this part up until we have a sizable part for our teleporter i am then going to change the brick color of this from medium stone gray all the way to really red inside of the properties and then we can go ahead, press Ctrl and D to duplicate this part, and we can move it over a little bit. I'm just going to move it over to here, and then we can make this part blue. Now we have a blue part and a red part. Let's go ahead and select both of these parts right here by holding Shift and selecting both of them. Then we can press Ctrl and G to group these parts together. I'm going to name this to teleporter and then we can press this anchor button just to make sure that our teleport parts are anchored from there let's go ahead open up our teleporter model and select the blue part and I'm going to name this to teleport destination 2 and then this is going to be teleport destination the red part will be and from there we simply add in a script into our teleporter model like this by clicking on the plus icon to the right of it and then adding in a script and right up here we're just going to start off with a few variables i'm going to start off by declaring a comment just to keep the code nice and organized we're going to say local red part will be equal to script.parent.teleport destination and then local blue part will be equal to script.parent.teleport destination 2. After that, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new variable for what we will call a debounce or a sort of cooldown. And this is going to be equal to a pair of braces or an empty table. Let's drop down a little bit and we're going to create a new comment for our functions right here. Now down here, we're going to say red part dot touched colon connect with parentheses function we go outside this parenthesis and we can delete it and put a new pair of parentheses and then we're going to put hit as the parameter for this function and what hit is going to be hit is the part that touched the red part whenever this function gets connected so in this case it's going to be like our player's left foot or player's right foot whatever part actually hit the red part when this function was called that's what hit is going to be so then we can say if hit dot parent which if it was a player's left foot or right foot then getting the parent of that foot would be the player's character so we're going to say if hit dot parent which should be the player's character character find first child quotation marks humanoid with a capital h then what this is going to do is simply going to check if this will actually was a character because if it has a humanoid inside of it that means that it most likely is a character then we're going to say local player will be equal to game dot players colon get player from character hit dot parent inside the parentheses that's going to get the player's character and then get the player from that character and then we're going to go ahead and say if player and not Table dot find debounce. This will search our debounce table and then a player right here. Then, so if the player exists and we did not find the player inside of the debounce table, then what we're going to go ahead and do is say table dot insert. This will be debounce because it's our debounce table that we're inserting something into. And then we're going to take the player as the thing they want to insert into the table. Going down a few lines, we're going to say wait three seconds roughly. Actually, we can probably do two seconds in all honesty now I'm thinking about it. We're going to say table.remove. This will be our debounce table that we're going to remove something from. And table.remove, it needs a position or the index of a specific table in order to find whatever we want to remove from it. So we can't just say debounce and then player as the thing they want to remove. We need to say table.find because we need to find the actual index of whatever we're going to find in order to remove it from the table. So we're going to say table.find, we're going to search through our debounce table and then take player as the thing that we're searching for. And that's going to find the index of the player inside of the debounce table and then remove it from the debounce table so that way the player can teleport again. Now right up here, before the wait two seconds right here, we're going to say player.character colon pivot to. If you don't know what pivot to, it pretty much just changes the C-frame of a model entirely to a new C-frame, which is basically teleporting whatever model we're choosing. In this case, it's the player's character. However, it could be something else if we wanted to. After this, we simply define a target C frame, which in this case will be our blue part dot C frame. And this is all that we need to do for our teleporter. Let's go ahead and press play right here and we can test it out. So as soon as we press on the red part, 
you can see we're going to be teleported over to the blue part. Now if we do that again, you can see, but since we have to wait two seconds first, you'll see we aren't actually able to teleport immediately before those two seconds are up. Let's go ahead and press stop, and this will work perfectly fine if you only want the red part to go to the blue part. But if you would like the blue part to go back to the red part as well, I'm going to show you how. For this, we need to go ahead and select our entire function right here, press Ctrl and C, or right click and press on copy. And then we can go down a few lines and press Ctrl and V, or right click and press paste. Now we simply change red part to blue part dot touched and we change this blue part dot C frame to a red part dot C frame. What this is going to do is simply make it so that whenever our blue part gets touched, it will teleport us as well. So you'll see that we can't teleport immediately because of the debounce, but then once the debounce goes away, we are now able to teleport freely again. And since this is all inside of this model right here, you can have as many of these teleporters as you would want to, and you can position these parts anywhere you would like, anywhere around your map. If we were to step on this part, you can see we'll go all the way over to this part over here, and then vice versa if we were to do it again all the way over here. So yeah, that's how we're going to make teleporters inside of Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed this tutorial, just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I will see you in the next video. Bye!